You probably don't need telling that Android is a very powerful and versatile operating system, but Google is working on something else which may well end up being a direct replacement. I split this video into four main sections and by the end of it, you should have a pretty clear idea of what all the fuss is about. So before we get into it, a quick note on kernels. Computer kernels are the core of an operating system. They provide the basic mechanisms around which the OS can be built. And a lot of Android's main problems come from the fact that it is based off the Linux kernel, which was not originally intended for phones. And in fact, Android, the software itself, was built initially for digital cameras. So from its very core, it isn't exactly specialized for what a phone needs to do. So what about Fushia? Well, this OS is based off a completely new kernel with two key benefits. It is designed with the smart, connected future in mind and is much less specific in its code and so built to work across a wider range of devices. They call this kernel Zircon. All right, so what's the benefit? The reason that Fushia OS is so powerful is that this kernel lets it run on pretty much everything. Everything from smartphones and PCs to fridges and traffic lights. One operating system for everything. So as more and more smart devices are now entering people's homes, a single OS could essentially mean completely seamless integration between them. Your music could switch from your phone speaker to your smart speaker the moment you enter a room, and your car could pick up your Spotify session exactly where you left off when you walked out the building. Also with Android, voice commands kind of feel like a tacked on feature, whereas actually they have the potential to be even easier than interacting with your phone using your fingers. And so Fushia will kind of be built around this idea, alongside much tighter security measures. It could solve what is arguably one of Android's biggest downsides, and that is fragmentation. Fragmentation is the reason why a a lot of these phones don't perform as well as their hardware is capable of, is the reason why updates are all over the place. And it exists because Android is a bit of a jumbled mess. Android has software, kernel, and drivers all woven together in a slightly different configuration for each device. This means Google can't just push an update through to every Android phone out there. These three aspects have to be decoupled manually by OEMs like Samsung and HTC. Google has very little control over how people experience Android on 95% of phones. And this is a problem because these OEMs don't really have an incentive to keep your device updated. They don't have an incentive to maintain performance over two years that you might use a phone. If anything, they want your current devices to become obsolete, so you'll buy more hardware, which is where their profits are. Fushia is simpler, it's cleaner, it's built with updates in mind. And it's also one of the ways that Google can actually regain control over the end user software experience. Also, Fushia OS is written on the Flutter software development kit, which is important because this works with Android 2, meaning that it's very likely Android apps will be able to run on it. Obviously, this is completely critical for any potential new operating system. It's not like Google could just start from scratch with the vast library of apps and games they've built on Android. So then you might be wondering, what does Fushia look like? Because Fushia is such an adaptable bit of software, it doesn't need a visual UI to run. But if you were to have it on a smartphone, we've got a pretty good idea of what it might look like. A very early APK file was leaked last year, and basically it's a list. But instead of one list that leads to another, everything is on this one page, and you never really leave the page. All applications you open operate within their own space, and one tap back home just minimizes them. It seems very focused, and the emphasis on accounts, logging in and logging out, reinforces its online nature. Interestingly, there's a volume and brightness slider right on the homepage, which may well mean there's no status bar. It's different, but that's to be expected with an OS built on entirely different DNA. Okay, so the big question, is Fushia about to replace Android? Maybe. Definitely not in the next couple of years, but Google has dedicated enough resources to this project. They've actually got over a hundred engineers working on it right now to kind of show that it's more than just a side hustle. This is a serious part of Google's vision of the future. In fact, only a couple of weeks ago, we found out that Fushia is now already being tested on smartphones after a code change was found on the Honor Play. So what do you think? Are you excited about the connected future we're moving towards? Or are you just a little worried that Google is slowly but surely controlling more and more aspects of our lives? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello.